All right, so today we are building a custom bookcase. Custom meaning that you can do whatever you want with this. There's some stipulations that we're gonna stick to and that's the height and the width and stuff like that, but the customization comes in where you can move the shelves up and down. You can add different types of molding. You can do really whatever you want. You can paint it, you can stain it. We're gonna do a distressed finish, which is very sort of in right now, if you will. The nice thing about this bookcase is it's very simple to do. With the help of the Craig jig, we're gonna make quick work of this. Uh, some things to think about when you're building something like this is where it's going. Again, customization is very important when you're building a bookcase like this. For me, because this is something that's going to be utilized in my son's room, I wanted this space right here for the big trophies. I know he's only eight, but I want the big football trophies right there. So I moved this shelf down a little bit so I can take that into consideration. For you, you might want little trophies or small books or bigger books. So again, customization is really important for something like this. The other thing to consider is the type of wood. Again, we're painting this. So this is something where I can kind of get away with a less expensive wood. Uh, something that doesn't make this bookcase as expensive. Um, I used birch plywood, some pine for the face frames, what's called a bed molding here, and then I used a little bit of a higher uh, base molding down there. Again, because it's a taller bookcase, I wanted to give it a good ratio. You know, I didn't want a very small molding at the very bottom. Again, very, very simple to build, and you can kind of go as crazy or as simple as you want. Again, with the help of the Craig jig, you can make this happen. Our sides, the thickness of our plywood is 11 and a quarter inches. That's the width. Now the overall width of our bookcase is 12 inches. Now the reason why I say 11 and a quarter is because you have the face frame and that's three quarter inch thick here. So again, 11 and a quarter is all I need. So if you take a four by eight sheet, you rip it four times, you've got four 12 inch strips, which I can put in my car, I can manage, makes very, very simple to cut. And that helps with the process as far as building it. Makes it easier to manage, easier to put around, and in the end, it's, it's a, just a better all around project. So at this point, uh, let's talk about tools. Uh, and I know I'm rambling a little bit, but this is one of those projects that it's not, we're not having to deal with all crazy type of joinery and stuff like that. Craig really simplifies this process. We are gonna use a nail gun, I'm going to use a table saw, you could use a circular saw as well, and then we're going to use a couple of drills to drill the holes, and that's basically the extent of it. So you can't get any simpler as far as tools. You don't need the joiner, you don't need the planer, because we, I took into consideration when we're planning it, these styles and these rails, that's the same exact size you'll buy it at the store with. Very, very simple. You can't get any easier. You don't have to cut those down. You do have to do very minimal sanding. And that's what this is all about. You want a really nice product at the end of this. You don't have to do a ton of work. And you want to be able to enjoy it. And hopefully at the end, if you did it right, it'll hold some books for you. So it's time to put on the tool belt and let's start building this thing. Okay, so we got everything moved out of the way. Rearranged some of the furniture, if you will, in the shop. And now you can see, here is our full four by eight sheet of plywood. Much, much, much more manageable sizes. I've got, boom, four 12 inch strips. Now, to make uh, our sides, sides are gonna be cut at 11 and a quarter inches, and our shelves are gonna be cut at 10 and a half inches. It'll make sense when we're putting it all together, so I'll explain it then. One thing to take into consideration when you're cutting, uh, because you've got these cut into strips, you wanna make sure that these edges are nice, clean, and crisp, because when the face frames are applied to them, or when you're attaching it to the sides, you wanna make sure there's not like a bunch of splinters or tear out or anything like that. So sometimes I've got a two, you know, four 12 inch pieces right here, or a little bit less if you will. You might want to take it and run it through the table saw on both sides, meaning that I'll take it, I'll run it through and clean up this side. Then I'll actually tap this over a little bit and then actually get my uh, completed width. And then that way everything is nice, clean and crisp and it makes for a better and easier uh, install if you will. All right, so let's actually cut these, and I'm gonna kind of zip through this. I'm gonna cut them to length as, as well, 60 inches on our sides and 34 and a half inches on our shelves. This is the boring part, so this is where we dance and make it go really, really fast. All right. We will speed up the video, but truthfully, take your time. No need to rush this. Make sure your measurements are exact. Believe me, you'll thank me in the end. All right, so I have another really cool uh, tool in the shop, if you will, from Craig. Let me run back here and grab it. It's a cutoff tool. 
Now normally, I would take this, I've got 60 inches as far as my height, and I'd bring it over here to my miter saw, slap it down there, make the cut, all is well with the world. But if you don't have a miter saw, this project isn't completely out of your realm because with a product like this, you can use a circular saw. The nice thing about this, and let me grab the circular saw real quick, throw this down here. Again, it becomes a juggling act when you have a smaller shop. But now, I mark it at 60 inches, right? That's my overall height. 60 inches right there. I take my pencil, I make a mark. I've made my mark. Now what this does, I just line up the edge of my cutoff here, my square cut, right with that, and I take my circular saw and I run it right through. Again, that way each side is exactly the same. Again, I'm going to use my miter saw because it's quicker and easier for me, but if you have a circular saw, this is a really cool tool to have as well. It makes it a little bit easier so you don't have to have all the crazy shop stuff. So you can introduce yourself into woodworking and not have to buy all the tools right away. So it's a cool tool to have and another thing that you should have in your shop if you don't have a miter saw. So I'm going to make those cuts and we'll be putting this together in no time. Safety glasses are a must, by the way. One minute later. So we've got two sides at 11 and a quarter, which is our width, and then we've got the length at 60 inches, and our cutoffs are going to be two of our shelves. We'll cut those down right now. So let me scoot this out of the way. When you're using a table saw, get the excess material off. It just makes sense. The other thing about the Craig products, and anytime you're using a pocket hole or putting together uh, butt joints, you want to make sure your saws are set up appropriately, meaning that this blade is perpendicular to your table. If you don't do that, then the joints don't come together well. So grab yourself, this is my favorite tool, it's, it's a cheap little drafting triangle. That way I roll my blade all the way up, unplug your saw, when you're doing stuff like this anytime you're near the blade with your fingers, unplug it. There we go, I'll unplug it for safety, I'm going to have to pull. It's all good. There you go. Unplug it. Safety's more important than noise. All right, there we go. We'll put that over there. But it's unplugged, so if I hit the switch, we're good. Now, the drafting triangle, tri blah, blah, blah. the drafting triangle, again, it's cheap, it's inexpensive. Setting this up is really important. We want this completely perpendicular. Boom, I know it's perpendicular. If your blade is off a little bit, it's going to make it more challenging to put this product together. So it's simple things like this, and again, this goes for the table saw, this goes for the circular saw, and this goes for their miter saw as well. Whatever you're using, set up your tools so that they're good. Also, point while I'm sitting right here near the blade, make sure that you've got a good blade, a good sharp blade when you're cutting plywood. For this one right here, this is an 80 tooth blade, it's perfect for cutting plywood or anything else. I can kind of multi use it for cutting some of my pine and some of my other solid stock. But again, the more teeth you bring to the party, the better you'll be. You'll get less tear out in the long run, which is really important. It makes, it makes your project show that you actually care. Uh, and if you use a blade that's dull, no good. So plug this all back in, we'll start making some cuts. I got the drops today. All right, here we go. All right, I know I got my back turned to you, but two very important things I want to talk about. Make sure you're wearing your safety glasses. It's just plain smart. The second being, set yourself a stop on the miter saw so that way you know that both of your sides are going to be cut to the same exact length. Here's four of our shells. One, two, three, four. Again, we're still using one piece of plywood. So we're good. The one thing, we've got our sides cut at 11 and a quarter inches, and we're going to cut our shelves now at the width of 10 and a half. So nice thing, another thing is, is that if you're using your table saw, if you know your table saw and you set it up, I don't have to use a tape measure then to come over here and check the measurement and say, oh, it's 10 and a half or anything like that. Set it up so that way you don't have to kind of keep pulling that stuff out. It makes your life a lot easier. Roll the blade down, and when you're setting your blade height, I like it a little bit above, about an eighth inch above, and minimizes tear out. And another thing, which is kind of, in my opinion, really important, a lot of the throats, if you will, which is this piece right here on your table saw, will be actually larger ones. Uh, there's one over there on the wall. 
I don't know if you can see it, it's got a big opening over there. And what that does is it allows you to bevel the saw back and forth. Um, we don't want to bevel the blade back and forth, we want it straight. So this one is, has a kerf, which is basically just a hole that's left by the blade coming up through. So what that does is when the material is actually going over top of the saw like this, it's being supported on both sides. And I know it sounds kind of simple, most people don't think about it, but that minimizes your tear out. Because plywood, if you can see, I don't know if you can, is a bunch of different layers. You can see it right there. And as soon as you go through one of the layers, what will happen is, is you're going to be more likely to tear out. And you'll see that a lot more when you cross cut something rather than when you rip it. But another thing, uh, a zero clearance insert is sort of a must in my shop, but it's something that you can make that judgment on your own. But it minimizes the tear out and makes life a lot easier. So we'll slice and dice, cut these, and we'll be good. All right. Anytime you're using a table saw and you're cutting longer strips of wood, make sure that that wood is supported after the blade. As you can see, I've got a stand right here to support it. You could use a table, whatever, but just be safe. <laughs> 